um, I'm charged with thinking about what the basic knowledge for global urbanization should be for master's students and to look at the PAB um, requirement, just as Ed was talking about it. And um, I thought I'd just uh, uh, give a little slide presentation to show you where things are with this particular uh, criterion. Uh, it is one of the uh, most uh, misunderstood and uh, abused, I think, of the uh, criteria that we have. Uh, along with law, uh, nobody seems to know what it means. Uh, and I think that's really kind of a problem. So there were these four characteristics that Ed went over and said, it must reflect interactions, flows of people, materials, cultures, differing approaches. Um, this, this is really very vague, very undefined. And the question is, is this particular set of things that we're supposed to be looking for fit for purpose? What are we trying to do for our master's students? What do we think the core knowledge should be? Um, we don't know what interactions means. Maybe it means understanding the importance of global themes such as we've heard in the previous talks, climate change, immigration, trade, and so forth. Uh, maybe it means understanding international agreements. Um, flows of people materials is a little clearer. It probably means uh, globalization, what this means and how we can uh, think about that within our curriculum. There are lots of ways to do that. Cultures, I think, again, obvious, understanding different approaches worldwide, but how do we, how do, we do this? And obviously learning from others, what are the best practices? How can we look to other places and understand what this might mean? Um, however, uh, since Ed has said the PAB is reviewing its standards, I think it's time to think about what a redefined standard of global dimensions of planning could include. First of all, you would think that we want our students as urbanists to have a general knowledge of what's happening in the world with regard to urbanization uh, in terms of where the growth is, what the synergies are between urban and rural activities, which is a very hot topic when you talk about these sorts of things around the world, and the location of urban growth. And secondly, we do stand for sustainable inclusive development. Uh, what is it that our students could know about this that's global? Uh, and here are some of the topics I was thinking of, obviously the interdependencies, the economic relationships, the environmental concerns and social issues, which they will get. But the question is, are we putting them in terms of the global dimensions? And remember this chart over here is showing how much growth there's going to be in urban populations and where it's going to occur. Uh, here is uh, where it is um, now, uh, basically, in terms of the growth. And uh, this nice big turquoise uh, wedge here shows you that Afri uh, Asia and Africa uh, are certainly going to be very, very important in this, in this growth. And that uh, North America is right up here. And what share of the urban population is shared by the different areas is also important. And, and our students ought to know this. I mean, they really should know what's going on in the world with regard to that. And they need to know, if, obviously, we're, we're good at this, at, at uh, holistic looking at things, the city is, but they need to understand, I think this is what our, our keynote speaker was talking about, the city is not an island. When she gave the example of the student who said she was just going to go to a local planning agency, why did she have to know anything about this? Decisions that are made at the local level have implications for the region, the state, the nation, and internationally. And these are the kinds of things that need to be known. And also, we need to be thinking about the co-benefits of the various strategies that we're putting forward, not just for our own localities, but for, as I said, scaling up and, and bridging, as the uh, GPEG uh, 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 report talked about. We need to be thinking about how we can broaden our reading for our students. We're very US focused. There's a tremendous amount of literature. These are just some examples. They all should be known, know about world urbanization prospects, what's happening in the world. It would be good for them to know about the human development um, index. Um, they should know what some of the non NGOs are doing in terms of thinking about how cities can play a role in these global uh, things that we're thinking about. Uh, we would hope they would know about the new urban agenda and Habitat 3, which is our arena in, in global activities. Uh, this discussion of what we've experienced with Trumpism uh, is well taken care of in this uh, essay by the Carnegie uh, Foundation, talking about how you can really make 
people understand, not just the middle class, but our population understand why it's important not to be America first, but to be what we're now beginning to see a change in sentiment. The World Bank has some terrific um, uh, literature and well as, as well, and also our students should know that the world, the 193 nations have uh, pledged to promote sustainable development through the sustainable development goals and where we are with that. Other things that we need to be teaching them, and I've got some examples here, um, basically globalization and its impact on places. Let's go back to our planner that uh, Farrah was talking about. Uh, she said, I'm going to a local, what do I have to know about that? Well, they really need to know that uh, their cities are very much part of an economy that's global and activities and, that, and things are coming from all over the world. And what happens in those parts of the world is going to affect what's happening in, in, their, in their towns as well. And obviously we do need to recognize the impacts of cross-border issues. We do that somewhat, but I think we could think a lot more about that when we think about uh, uh, the global dimensions as our students need to do. And we can think about how we dig deeper. How do we get to these sorts of things? This is just an example of something we're doing at Penn where we're looking at how you pay for uh, climate resilient uh, infrastructure and who are all the agents that uh, provide that financing. It's well enough for say we have to do it, but how are we going to pay for it? So that's not necessarily in the core, but you've got to introduce them to the fact that there are lots of issues surrounding the basic knowledge that you, we will give them. So the question is why should master students be exposed to redefined ideas of the global dimensions of planning? Well, there are, we, we definitely want to strengthen their expertise in urban matters. We, they, again, we're saying that we need to really have a sense of what role we play in our nation and our, in the world and down to our local city. So it's from local to global, but you've got to give them tools to understand that. It can enhance their job performance, just as we were describing the impact of globalization on localities, that's important. Also opportunities. Uh, the State Department now is talking about creating its own entity within it, which we be talking about state and local government. Very hard to talk to State Department people. I don't know if you've ever tried to do that. All they know about is international relations, um, global economies, trade, uh, security. Uh, and then you start talking to them about what our nation does for sustainable development and they sort of press, scratch their heads. They are now thinking that's very important to move in this direction. Um, our HUD has an age, a, a unit on international affairs and now increasingly cities are creating international affairs activities. This is uh, the mayor of Los Angeles has been particularly active in this whole thing because he sees this as a way to enhance the um, economic base of his, of his community. Whoops. What happened? Jeannie, that's about um, seven minutes right there. Okay, then I'm, at, I'm done. <laughs> You're right. Um, so I just want us to think about what we want our students to do and what we think is fit for purpose in terms of where we're going with this criterion and what the basic knowledge should be. Thank you. That was wonderful. Really, really rich. You've got references in there that I want to go dig up. And I do this stuff. <laughs>